Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GMAT. We have been solving GMAT math problems out of this book here GMAT Review, the official guide, the 13th edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase it immediately. You're going to need it. The book contains 230 problem solving questions. It has 174 data sufficiency questions. We have already solved every single one of those math problems. If you are interested in watching the original solution to any one of these problems, you will find the original solutions from day number 1 through 250. Right now we are in the process of redoing the problems and we are on page number 172. Please turn to it. Page number 172, problem number 144. Let's take a look at it. Number 144. In 144, we are told that initially we had 500 workers. And we are told that of those 500 workers, 15% were women. 15% were women. We know, we know that 10% of 500 is 50. 10% of 500 is 50. And another 5% would be half of 50, which is 25, which means we had a total of 75 women to start out with. Let's see what happened next. Then we are told that we hired we hired 50 more workers. We hired 50 more workers. So this is the initial amount. And we hired 50 more workers. So now we have 550. And as a result, we are told that now we have 20% are women. 20% are women. Again, we know 10% of 550 is 55, so 20% is going to be 55 plus 55, which is 110, which is 110. We started out with the 75 women, and now 20% of 550, we are told, are women, which makes it 110. Therefore, we must have hired 35 women. That's all. Let's do the next one, shall we? Number 145. Number 145. Number 145 says that the average, the average was $400 for 10 days. We also told that the average was 360 for the first 6 days. The question is, was the average for the last four days. Very simple, very straightforward process, a very straightforward question. Question simply is what must have been the average of last four days if the overall average for 10 days was $400 given the fact that the average for the first six days we are told was 360. Now listen, whenever you're dealing with questions like this where they tell you that the average for six days was 360, think of the simplest quickest, easiest scenario to, to, to deal with, pretend that every single day was 360. So if I have six days and every single day is I make $360 with no variation at all, 360, 360, 360 for six days, of course the average is going to be 360. I didn't want the average of 360, I wanted the average of 400. I want the average of 400 for the first, first 10 days. How much am I short every day? Every day I'm short $40. This tells us that our, our average we wanted to be 400 but in reality it was only 360. That tells us that we are short, we are short, we are short $40 per day for six days. For the first six days we are short $40 every day. That's $240. That's $240. I have to make up for this shortfall, I have to make up for this deficit, I have to make up for this deficiency in the next four days. In the last four days I have to make up those $240. In addition to making $400 every day, which is what I'm required to make, which is what I had planned to make, $400 every day, now I have to make up another $240 in four days. $240 divided by four is 60. I have to make up 60 extra dollars for the next four days. In other words, the average for the last four days, I have to have $460 as the average. So that's one way of looking at it, which is a more intuitive way 
which is also, which is more of a conceptual way of dealing with the problem. On the route is to actually go about it in a very traditional, very very orthodox, very academic way. If you like, we can do it that way, that way as well, if, 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 if it pleases you. It's not necessary, but if it pleases you, we can do it that way as well. Well, that way is very straightforward. The conventional way is... Conventional way is to realize that if you had an average of $400 for 10 days, that will give us $4,000. That will give us $4,000. But for the first six days, we had an average of only $360. So it's $360 times 6. How much is $360 times 6? How much is 360 times 6? You must know you must know your squares as I always remind you 1 through 20 and you must know your cubes. You must know at least few of the cubes. For example, you must know 1 cube is 1, 2 cube is 8, 3 cube is 27, 4 cube is 64, 5 cube is 125, and 6 cube is 216. You must know these basic things. Now you might be wondering why in the world is this guy all of a sudden talking about cubes? Well it comes in very handy in the exam. It comes in handy in the places where you don't expect it to be. For example, what we are looking at here is 36, which is 6 squared. 6 squared times 6. Well, 6 squared times 6 is 6, 6 cubed, which is right there. 216. So it's actually $2,160. Subtract one from the other, and you should get a 0, a 4, 9 minus 1 is 8, and then 1. $1,840. $1,840 now, we have to make up this $1,840. This $1,840 has to be made up in 4 days. X times 4 has to be 800. In four, in 4 days, we have to make up this $1,840. The question is, how much do we need to earn every day? Just divide that amount by 4. 1,840 divided by 4. But as I said, this is a very academic, very tedious way of doing it. This is more straightforward, intuitive way. How many 4s in a 1? 1 has no 4. The remaining 1 goes and joins the 8, becomes 18. How many 4s in a 18? 18 has 4 4s. Four 4s four are 16. 4 4s are 16. The remaining two goes and joins the four becomes twenty-four. How many fours in a twenty-four? Twenty-four has six fours. And how many fours in a zero? Zero has no fours. There you go, four hundred and sixty, just like we predicted. Just like just like our intuition led us to believe, the average for the last four days has to be four hundred and sixty dollars. We had to make up additional sixty dollars every day for the last four days to make up for the deficiency of two hundred and forty dollars over the period of first six days. We were short forty dollars every day for the first six days. We have to make up for it. Let's do the next one. 146. One hundred and forty six. In one hundred and forty six we are told that the total expenditure total expenditure is 1.2 times 10 raised to 12 and we are told that the population is 240 million population is 240 million the question is what's the per capita expenditure what's the per capita expenditure per capita expenditure is simply the total expenditure divided by the population Let's find out, shall we? We don't need this anymore. We just have to divide one by the other. Total expenditure by population. They're just trying to see. They're just trying to see if you know how to manipulate your numbers in scientific notation. That's what it is. So let's let's begin then. So on the top, you're going to have the total expenditure, which is 1.2 times 10 raised to 12. 1.2 times 10 raised to 12 over the population, which is 240 million. 200 and 40 million which is like this which of course can be written as which of course can be written as 240 times 10 raised to 6 and 10 raised to 12 in return in turn can be in turn can be written as 10 raised to 6 times 10 raised to 6 right here 10 raised to 12 here that you see there that is equal to 10 raised to 6 times 10 raised to 6 which is what we did here so we have to, we have 10 raised to 6 on the top, we have 10 raised to 6 on the bottom, that drops out, and we're almost done. It's just 1.2 divided by 240 is what we have to do here. Now listen, what we're going to do now, because this is 1.2 business, I don't like that 1.2 business, let's, uh, what can we do here? Let's, let's, let's divide top and bottom by 100. Let's divide top and bottom by 100, and you will see in a second why. Okay, stay with me in the story. How much is 100, 
How much is 100 times 1.2? 100 times 1.2, I hope you are able to see that it is 120. 100 times 1.2 is 120. So this is this amount, this times this. And then we have, don't forget 10 raised to 6. 10 raised to 6. Stay with me in the story as I said already. And the bottom we will have 100 times 240. Are you still with me? 120 divided by 240 is just 2. 10 raised to 6, 10 raised to 6 of course can be written as 100 times 10 raised to 4. Are you still with me? Very good. 100 can go away as well. Let's change the color. This is nice, nice time to be dramatic. 100 goes away. What we are left with is 10 raised to 4 over 2. That's it. We are almost done. Everything else is gone. How much is 10 raised to 4? Well, let's find out, shall we? 10 raised to 4 is just 1 with 4 zeros. 3, 4 zeros, which is 10,000 divided by 2. The answer is $5,000. Per capita expenditure was $5,000. Per capita expenditure was $5,000. Don't go around don't go around saying per capita expenditure was $5,000 per person. That is redundant. That is redundant. That's what per capita means. Per capita means per person. Either say that the expenditure was $5,000 per person or simply say per capita expenditure was $5,000. Don't go around saying per capita expenditure was $5,000 per person. That is redundant. That is silly. I heard many, many a time people speak like that. As I said, that is silly. Let's go on. 147. 147. I need my break. One hundred and forty seven it says that we have a rectangular window. We have a rectangular window, we are told, where it is twice as long as it is wide. So whatever the width is, whatever the width is, the length is two times the width. The length is two times the width. We are told that it is twice as long as it is wide. You want me to write everything down? You don't it says it's twice twice as long as it is wide. Twice as long as it is wide is this equation right here. We also told that the perimeter is 10 feet. I need the room. We need the room here. Let's erase all of this thing. We already have everything. The perimeter we are told is perimeter we are told is 10 feet. The question is how much is the width? What are the dimensions they are asking? What are the dimensions? Let's find out, shall we? So the perimeter is going to be uh, width plus the width, that's 2w, and then length which is 2w right here and a 2w right here. 2w plus 2w, that's 4w plus 2, 6w, this is 6w. The perimeter equals 10, perimeter equals 10 which expressed in terms of width is 6 times the width because this is length is twice the width. This length is 2 times the width, this length is 2 times the width, 2 plus 2 is 4, 5 and 6. Let's solve for W. W is going to be 10 divided by 6, which is same as 5 over 3. That's it, we are done. That's it, they were looking for dimensions. They were looking for the dimensions of this window. The dimensions of those windows are 5 by 3 times 10 by 3. This is the width and this is the length. Length of course is 2 times that, so you just take the width and multiply it by 2. It's 5 by 3 by 10 by 3. That's all. And that will be answer choice B. Let's go to the next one. Number 148. Number 148. I don't know how long the video has become already, but we'll keep on going. In 148, we are told how many different paths from X to Y. Well, let's begin our journey, shall we? Let's begin our journey. This is what is right here is our X we are shown, and then we can go this way. Okay, all right, very good. 
Then we continue our journey up to here. Then we go this way. Then we continue our journey here. Then we go this way. Then we continue our journey here. And then we could go this way. And then we continue our journey here. Now I realize. Now I realize that what I plotted on the on the on, on the blackboard does not quite look like the what, what the picture that they give you, but you get the idea. It's the exact same thing. I was just trying to fit everything in the blackboard the way it, the way I started plotting it. It's not going to change the gist of the problem. It's not going to change the nub of the problem. Let's give these paths names. Let's give them names so we can talk about them. Okay. So I started my journey from point X. I point, arrived at this point right here. At this point, I have two choices. I can either take Path A or Path B. I have two choices to continue my journey from this point on. I have two choices, either Path A or Path B. I have two choices. Doesn't matter whether I take Path A or Path B, I continue my journey this way or that way. I arrive at this point. From there, I have no choice but to continue this way. There is only one way. Once I arrive here, again, I have two choices. I can either take Path C or Path D. So I have two more choices. So, so far, to go from X to let's call this, we have, we have a Y here, let's call this Z. To go from X to Z, I have four choices. I can take four different, I can take four different paths. I can take A, A, C. I can take A and then C. I can take A and then D. I can take B and then C. Or I can take B and then D. I have four different ways of getting to Z. Once I get to Z, I have no choice but to continue journey this way. Once I arrive at this point, again I have three different choices to continue my journey. I can take path E, F or G. There are three different choices at this point. And then finally I arrive at Y. How many different ways do I have to go from X to Z? The answer is 2 times 2 times 3, whatever that works out to be. There are 12 different choices. There are 12 different ways we could do our journey. The answer is C. Let's go to the next one, number 149. Number 149. Number 149 tells us that if we were to see X and then circle with a dot in it times and Y, what we are supposed to do is take the square root of these two numbers. Take the, the take the product of their the, take the square root of their product. We are told that if we see two numbers, one on the left hand side of the circle and one on the right hand side of the circle, then our instruction uh, our instruction are to take the, the product and then take the square root of the product. Fine. Very simple instruction. We'll just follow it. We'll just follow the instruction. I just described the whole thing as instructions, and if they are instructions. It's very difficult to follow it. We will follow them. Do you understand? We'll follow them. What is being asked is this. 5 dot 45 and then dot 60. It's very simple. It's a two-step process. It's a two-step process. First we have to figure out the value that we see in the parenthesis, which is 5 dot 45 our instructions are very simple. Take the square root of their product. Take the square root of their product. 45. Of course that can be written as 5 times 45 can be written as uh, 5 times 9. What's the square root of 5 times 5? The square root of 5 times 5 is 5. What's the, what's the square root of 9? The square root of 9 is 3. So the answer is 15. The answer to this quantity is 15. That part is done. We are done with that part. We need to erase it. We will move on to the second stage. 5.45 turns out to be 15. Once we have the 15, we repeat the same process. We repeat the same process which is same as so this quantity, 15 dot 60, is same as the square root of 15 times 60, which of course can be written as square root of 15 times 15 times 4, because 15 times 15 times 4 is 60. 15 times 4 is 60. 
Now what's the square root of 15 times 15? Square root of 15 times 15 is just 15. And what's the square root of 4? Square root of 4 is 2. Voila. The answer is 30. The answer is 30. Let's go to the next one, number 150. Number 150. 10 raised to 4 minus 10 raised to 2 times 0 .00, 0 0.0012 repeating. Ah, this is interesting. So that quantity that you see there, the second quantity that you see there is 0 .02, 0 0.0012 repeating. That's what the bar means on the bar there on the top. The bar on the top, this bar right on the top, tells us that it's, it's repeating. So it's point zero zero one two one two one two one two until the until the cows come home. Do you understand? Forever and ever. Amen. And our job is to find the product of that quantity and this quantity. Let's see what we can do. Let's see what we can do. Well, we can we can apply the uh, the same concept that we all uh, that we find come across in algebra, which is one minus a minus b times c is simply a times c a times c minus would have been better if I shown the arrow the other way around a times c minus b times c do you see that? the only difference is typically we put the c in the front it doesn't change anything it's a times c minus b times c that's exactly what we can do is 10 raised to 4 which is our A times this quantity right here, which is our C. This quantity is our C. And then it's going to be 10 raised to 2 times that quantity. Let's do it together. Let's do it together, shall we? So it's going to be 10 raised to 4 times 0 0.0012, repeating minus 10 raised to 2 times 0 0.0012 repeating. Are you with me still in this story? It's very important that you stay in this story, okay? It's very important that you stay in this story. 10 raised to 4 is what it says here. Let's change the color so we can actually emphasize this. We can accentuate it. It is 10 raised to 4. 10 raised to 4 tells us that we have to move our decimal places, this decimal here, 4 places. It becomes 4 places. 1, 2, 3, and 4. Now remember, what this is actually is, remember what this is, what this is actually is, 0 0.0012121212121212. 0 it, it, it doesn't end here. That's it. It's not, it's not 0 0.0012. Had it been 0 0.0012 times 10 raised to 4, that simply would have been 12. But it's not going to be 12 because it's 0 0.001212. So there is one two after that. There is, there is, there is more, more one two after that. So this quantity divided times this quantity is going to be 12 times 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, forever and ever. Minus, minus this quantity. Again, we move the decimal places twice. We move the decimal places two places. 1 and 2. It ends up here. So it becomes 0.12. This becomes this decimal ends up here. It becomes 0 0.121212 forever and ever. So we take out this quantity, we take out this quantity which came from here, and we subtract this quantity which is right here. We subtract that quantity which is 0 0.121212 forever and ever. We subtract one from the other. What do you suppose is going to happen? Despite the fact that it never ends, despite the fact that it never ends, but because of the fact that it is the same exact series at the top and the bottom, is the same pattern, they cancel each other. It's just 12. The answer is 12. Listen, I'm done for today. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.